Sen. First, I would like to introduce Sonia Hudon. She's a teacher at Rosemont College. She's been for 10 years in administrative techniques. She has a BA in uh, marketing and also a short uh, degree in electronic matters. She's the co-founder of no, the business Know Me Cohesion. I hope you'll have a good webinar. Sonia, up to you. Thank you. So I'll share my screen. First off, please take a pen and, pa and paper. And then please write on that sheet, what do you do to create bond in your classroom? Maybe not all of you are teachers, some are educational uh, advisors, but if you were a teacher, what would you do to create bonding in within your class? Could people share that in the chat a little later please yes i will i will ask them to write in the chat a little later so take a few moments to do that now i'll share two sentences that's how i got inspired for my project i've been working on the educational relationship for years and those two sentences are already at the basis of what inspired me First, what's your name again? That's something that I've heard too often. And another that is worse, you at the back of the of the class with a blue sweater. What do you think? So first, I'll talk about my own background. Then I talk about the educational relationship. What is it? Why is it important? And then I'll give you some tips that come from research that are integrated in uh, the Nomi project to create bonds. First, my background. Nicole said it. I've been in uh, the administrative techniques field for 10 years, almost 11 years in uh, Rosemont Co College. I started at the Lionel Gru. There at Rosemont, it's a very mixed uh, student community. How is that? Well, there at there's educational path. Some come directly from uh, high school. Others, they are back to school after uh, a gap year or gap years. So their age is very diverse. And also that uh, CEGEP on the Montreal Island is uh, very small, but the community is, is very diverse. So many students come from uh, diverse cultural backgrounds. As Nicole said, I have a master's in administrative techniques from Sherbrooke University. And then at the beginning of my studies, I I thought, how can I help my students to succeed? So that's the results of those research that I will share today. And then I founded, I co-founded Know Me. People who don't know Me, I will explain later what it is. First, two questions. What is the educational relationship? Why, does, why is it important? The first definition of the uh, educational relationship comes from POSTIC 2001. The social relationships that are established between the educator and those he educates in order to achieve educational objectives. So the teacher with the students in a certain framework for for learning in an institutional structure, in my case, in a CEGEP. And that possess identify, identifiable cognitive and affective characteristics. So there's the relationship aspect as well, the affective aspect that is uh, very important. Why is it important? While you're here, you're spending one hour of your time to listen to this webinar. So I'm sure you're already convinced of how important it is to create bonding, to create that uh, edu educational relationship in our classrooms. 
Still, I will give you arguments if you still have doubt uh, about how or why is it important. So first, a sentence from Chassé, 2006. I find that it's a wonderful sentence. For many students, every opportunity for educational contact is important, even crucial. They have a real need for this human gaze on them. Chassé also says, there's a consensus installed in education concerning the impact of the quality of the relationship between teachers and students on the latter's affective and co cognitive development. I like this sentence because we talk here about consensus, a consensus. In the education field, some researchers will have certain opinions, others will have uh, other opinions, but here there is a, con when there's a consensus, we all agree that the quality of that relationship is important. So if that relationship is good, it has an impact on the, the affective and as well as cognitive development. Many research, uh, many researchers show that to create that link between the, the students and ourselves will have a positive impact on their uh, school success. Other researchers had some interesting things to say. They say that to develop a bond with students is one of the most valuable investments teachers can make to improve the quality of their lessons. Sometimes we use different educational methods to improve quality. Those researchers show that to create bonds is one of the best investments you can make in terms of the quality of your courses. Other arguments to convince you? Here's another researchers, researcher, Brower, 2011, that showed what are the benef bene benefits for the teachers. Less stress than teaching in an anonymous mass of students gets attention more easily, less chatter, less delay, fewer excuses for handing in work, organizes active learning activities more easily. So you see that it, it really makes classroom management easier. For students now, what are the benefits? They, they feel less anonymous in the class as a whole, better attendance, more effort on the job, more participation in class. Last spring, I had a focus group with some of my students and I asked them, what is important for you? How is it important for you to create bonds? What they said had a big impact on me. So here I want to share some of the things they said during that focus group. When you make connections, you feel good about yourself. If a teacher doesn't know my name, it's like I'm an object in his eyes. I want to be a student in the class, not just an, hey, over there. Teachers are my second family. For me, it's difficult to approach people. When a teacher knows my name, I'm more motivated to make an effort to succeed. We saw that, we saw that before. Research shows that the investment, investment that the teachers make really helps people make more efforts. And then students actually confirm that, they confirmed that to me last year during the focus group. I feel really lonely and I don't know how to make friends. With the pandemic and social networks, we don't know, we don't, we no longer know how to get in touch with others. Everyone wants social interaction, but we're scared. We immediately pull out our cell phones so we don't have to talk, but in reality, everyone wants to talk. See, I, I had asked students how important is that educational relationship and student-teacher relationship? 
And then they went wider than that. They told me that they don't know how to bond with each other anymore. So yes, they want an educational relationship with their teachers, but they also want to get to know each other's within students and they are no, able, no longer able to do that. Sorry, there's a little hiccup with my PowerPoint. I'll add this then, Sonia. Milenia Rosie says that in FAD, it's, it's very important. It's especially important. Yes. In CEGEP, it's, it's difficult to bond. Several students suffer from loneliness. It's a different step. Uh, CEGEP are a different, uh, CEGEPs are a diff difficult step between high school and university. It's a difficult step to go through. So students tell us how they suffer from loneliness. And Statistics Canada actually said that one out of four students suffer from loneliness. So I think you're convinced now it is important to, cre to create connections or to make connections. Now we will see how we can do that. Remember, I asked you to reflect on that. Now you can share it in the chat box. What do you do to create uh, links or create connections between people in your classroom? to learn their first name fastly. I'm not very good at remembering people's uh, first name. So that's why I use, uh, I invested in Nomi. It really helps me. I is bringing activities, games. Someone talked about the smile. Understand where the student comes from smile and say hi say hello to create a trust trusting environment i can see that you're all convinced and you all have good ideas yeah, you're all doing uh, great things thank you that's just about the topic that is taught excellent to find common ground great Here's what I want to share now. The how to create educational relationship according to research. First, it's between students and teachers. So there's that research body on educational relationship. So you have to establish important values first. It's paramount, respect, confidence, harmony. You have to have that, or trust rather, respect, trust, and harmony. You have to have that in your in your classroom. These bullet points I won't read, but I invite you to read them. Those are other uh, research results. I draw attention on certain points, like call your students by their name. You wrote that in the chat. Discover what they like what is interesting for your students. I don't know how many students you have when you teach. At Rosemont, I often have two different courses, about 30 students per class. So in a regular session, I can have more than 100 students. I said it, I don't have a good memory. It takes me time to remember their names. So when I remember what their interests, well, I'm um, getting older, so our interests are very different in terms of series, the, the TV series, we like music and everything. So it's difficult, but it's important. It's not easy, but it's important. Those are elements I want to present here, how, how we, use, we, we use those elements to create Nomi. And you can have a look at uh, what the research says. 
I like the last one. Smile, students will see that you appreciate them and your own work. So a smile goes a long way. Introducing Nomi. I'll go into details, but first, seven ingredients, seven basic principles that we took over from research and pushed it further. The research was mostly about the relationship between teachers and students, but students have told us that they suffer from loneliness. They don't know how to interact with each other. So we thought, okay, let's use Nomi to also develop those bonds. So we help create bonds between students, but the teacher will also benefit from that. What are those seven ele elements, those seven important principles? As I said, we went further. We didn't stick to the educational relationship. We also uh, went further to uh, encompass all the bonds within the classroom. So those seven principles, laughter, common ground, go to go little by little, to work in small groups, respect for personality, inclusion and diversity, and making room for connections. Laughter. Laughter not only builds relationships, but it also increases people's willingness to disclose personal information, even when they are unaware of it. We thought that part was important. When you have fun, when you laugh, when you're happy. I Personally, I think that a day without laughter is, uh, is a waste, is a day that is wasted. So I'd like you to write jokes for you, what makes you laugh in your everyday life. You can share that in the chat. If you have a good joke to share, put it in the, in the chat box. We will maybe read it later. But again, laughter helps you disclose a little more than you otherwise would. That's what happens when you're in a fun environment. So through that kind of atmosphere, you disclose a bit more, those little bits of information. Then second, the common, common traits or common ground. Is any, anybody here comes from La Co the Côte Nord, the North Coast? Can you raise your hand? If the, oh no, they can't raise their hand. No, they can't raise their hand. If you come from the Côte Nord, the North Coast, could you write the city you're from, please, in the chat? Meanwhile, I see the jokes, makes me smile. Ah, there, Settil. I come from Settil myself, Camille Moreau. I left Settil in 1990 after my cégep. Camille, your name sounds a little long, younger than me or probably younger than me, but I also come from Settil. Oh, you arrived only two years ago. I'm in Montreal now, I left in 1990. See, I found a common ground with Camille. I can't see her, but we're making connections. Next time, if I meet her again, I'll say, oh yeah, we met during the webinar. We had that common trait. You can, you're, you live in Satil, I come from Satil. So, So you know that that say like meets like. And then according to uh, Gray Parkinson and Dunbar, they say the more common traits you have, it can be place of birth, it can be uh, relig religion, uh, sense of humor, and so on, the stronger our friendship. So I told you, my, my, my classrooms are very diverse. It's a mixed bag. Every student is different. So 
if they're able to find common ground, common traits, it really helps them bonding. And we want through Nomi to help them find those uh, common traits, little by little. Maybe you can find the love of your life in a heartbeat, but most of the time a relationship builds slowly, little by little. So first you, you disclose a little bit. If you have common traits, you'll share more. But normally we don't go too far the first time and then we disclose more and more at every, every time we meet. Before I got interested in the educational relationship, I would every time I would have a um, ice breaking activity during the first course, 90 minutes, a big ice breaking activity. Then during the next uh, 14 or 15 uh, courses, I wouldn't do anything. So I was not abiding by that theory of social penetration that says that we're like onion onions. We peel the skin slowly, little by little to get to the, the core of the uh, onion, the core of the uh, relationship. So now I have many activities, small activities throughout the semester in, instead of just one big activity. In small groups, it's difficult to get to know one another when you're a big group of 30 or 35 people. It's almost impossible to get to know all those people in such a small time frame. So in Nomi, we create small groups, random small groups. We modify them at uh, every class. So in one class, there'll be a small group. Then next time, it'll be a different group. Some students will still be together, but others won't. But what's important is to have small groups, no more than three students in each group. I'll talk later about inclusion. We want to make sure that everybody feels included and people who are introverts also will feel included. When it's only two students, some people won't feel comfortable speaking out. But in a group of three, a person that is a more passive person that likes to listen more than talking, they will be there also. They will be included. It's not as intimidating. Sonia? Before we go further, could you sh give us an overview of Nomi? What is it? What is it used for? And how is it different from other activities? What are the pros? What are the cons? So, and then after that, we, we can explore it more. I'll, I'll, I'll be there in a few minutes. I'll talk about it in a few minutes. Is it all right? Yeah. I just want to explain the basic principles of Nomi and then I'll explain what it is. Essentially, it's a tool for uh, bonding or for bonds creation. I don't want I don't want to give you the punch right now. Thank you. So we're talking about three to seven student groups. Respect for personality. When it comes to bonding, some students are introverts. But it doesn't mean that they want to be alone. They also need those uh, relationships. And generally, but it's different from one person to the next, but generally what is important is that we all need relationships. We all need to bond. And Nomi really respects each single person personality. Just the way we I talked about before, small groups, people have power over how they per participate. So that's how we respect uh, everyone's personality. Another feature of Nomi is that you'll have activities in class. Why? Well, when you're an introvert and you and you have uh, activities such as a, a pizza night and so on, well, it's extroverts that will per participate in those activities, people who have already made bonds. But if you do that inside the classroom, 
then you also reach out to all students, including the ones that really need bonding, including the introverts. Inclusion and diversity. That's something I'd like you to comment on in the chat. I'm curious, I would like to know if you go through the same things that I do, especially if you work in a very culturally diverse uh, context, but people will get together. People from North Africa, for example, they'll sit together. Haitian students will sit together. French students, there are a lot of French students in the during the fall semester, they'll sit together. Audrey is saying, yes, absolutely. Are you in Montreal as well, Audrey? Even in Chicoutimi, even in regions. Like meets like. There was a big conference the other day. We were about 100 people and it struck me how people met with people from their own background or people who looked alike. So no, with Nomi, we want to break those silos. Nomi helps people to go and meet with people who normally wouldn't talk to. Here, you see students from my classroom they are using Nomi and you can tell they come from different backgrounds, but they met through Nomi and they appreciate each other. They created bonds. Last element, make room to create uh, connections. Now you're convinced about the importance the importance of uh, bonds. But although we find we know it's important, but we'll put it aside because we think the most important is my educational content is what I'm going to say in the classroom. I have a big course to uh, to get through, so I won't focus on that. Maybe you want to write something in the chat. Remember, I told you one of the most important things, according to a researcher, I don't want to go up to the first uh, slides, but a researcher said that to create bonds is one of the most precious things. He even used the word investment. It's one of the most valuable investments in terms of cognitive faculties. We don't always focus on bonds enough, but it's a very valuable investment. Marjorie, what? Marjorie, I'm happy you. It's not a thing uh, in your classroom, but I. It's a thing in my class. It's often a thing in my classroom. They often, often uh, like meets like. So, those were the basis. But what is NOMI? It comes from my master's degree in education. I worked on the educational relationship. I wanted to see how I could help students to know each other. But no, actually, first I wanted to help myself. I wanted to help myself to know them better. But they told me, well, we don't know one another. So that's why we tweaked NOMI that that was a modification in the development of that uh, application. So yes, it is an app. It can be used on your computer, on your laptop, on your computer, on uh, your cell phone, or on your uh, iPad. You can just use the link nomi.ca. It's in French and in English. We want to really reach the heart of the students with the basic principles I talked about, following those basic principles, inclu inclusion and diversity to create bonds between people. How does it work? 
first you have to create a file. Students told us that before the beginning of the, before the start of the semester in Rosemont, for example, the semester, uh, a semester starts on August 20th. So one week before, the teachers will send a link or an invite to the students so that they create an account and create a file on Nomi. So students will have less stress because they'll already know who is in their class, so less anxiety. They get that link, they file, they fill their file. There are students, uh, there are questions for students such as a cool job you've had or a person you'd like to meet. So they click on the questions that they want to answer to, they choose. It's very inclusive. Then they have their file and they see the faces of their classroom. They have a limited view. They only see their classmates. If they click on a the file, they'll see that file. They, they'll get an overview of other students' uh, files. So they can know how many people there are in their class or there will be in their class in psychology, for example. Oh, there, there will be 30 students. This, the person can click on all files. They'll know, okay, that person, what do they like? Oh, they like Jack Johnson. It's one of my favorite singers. So I can know the what the interests of other students are. Uh, the app does does the app ask for the consent from the student? Yes, it does. So you can see you can use pictures or you can use avatars. We uh, suggest a site to create avatars because it's a very inclusive uh, avatar creating platform. Students choose what question they want to answer to, and no content is sensitive. For example, the uh, pronoun, the first name, pronouns are useful because sometimes I don't know if a student is a boy or a girl. So having the pronoun, it helps me. They can ch choose uh, he, she, or they they decide which pronoun they identify to, in which study program they are. And here, different strengths that they have, the languages that they speak. Then there are zodiac signs, it's just for fun. And again, the questions are different from uh, one student to the next because they choose their question they choose the questions they want to answer to here you only see some of the questions that they are but there's a series of questions they can answer to some questions or to none is they're free and there's again no sensitive information that is shared here and here's what the teacher sees. They see the student list. And also they have ice breaking games and other options I will touch on later on. During the first class, the teacher can launch an ice breaking game. How does it work? It's, it's very easy. Some teachers told me that it's so easy can we share video presentations? No, it's not possible. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question later. I uh, was distracted. As I said, some teachers told me, it's so easy. I'm not sure I've gone through everything. Yes, it's just so easy. So they launch the game, uh, the student gets a notification, once everybody has uh, accepted, then the teacher will create, uh, will uh, launch it again, will confirm, and then Nomi will create teams. Everybody will get the game's rules. And then people will stand up 
with their, their phone. They will go and meet with their team, the other team members, and that's when there are all uh, other icebreaking games. In this case, it's a situation game. They have $20,000 to go alone somewhere they've never been to. There's an interactive map. They have to make a choice. They have 20 seconds to make their, their choice. So that's, that's the game. So the question is always, is it an inclusive game? We decided to have students go to a place where they've never been. We didn't want to compare students with one another. You win a contest, you get $20,000, you're alone, you go to a country you don't know, where you've never been, and where you don't know any, anyone. Then you're on the interactive map, and we talk about the choice we we made. You see, it's very easy, it's very simple, it's very fast, and it helps people disclose some a part of themselves, but it doesn't have people go into intimate details. Here, there are other activities. We always uh, add activities, but every time we add an activity, we ask ourselves, is it inclusive? Will it trigger conversations? The cell phone is just a pretext or just an, uh, a starting point for conversation. We won't have students uh, hunch over their phones. They will really, uh, it will really trigger a conversation. We want to make sure that every game is fun. We want people to have fun. And some games, for example, who said what? It's a very, it's one that people like a lot. You have to stop them. They don't want to, don't want to stop. I ask them, are you still on know me? Who said what? It's it's the top. It's the top game that people like. But they are all fun, and they are all played in small groups, and they were all validated by users, with students, with teachers as well. We're also develop developing other tools to help uh, teachers in their job. So there's the attendance attend to how to check attendance. I hate checking attendance. Sometimes I would do that on my computer or I would print out um, my sheet. Then there are two or three first names. I wouldn't know which one uh, I would have to, to use. So we really re-engineered the whole process of attendance checking. The student goes uh, around the class with their cell phone and they go and meet the students. They click when the student is there. Then there's a report that is uh, sent sent out. It's shared by email. There are even messages for students that uh, are not in attendance with AI, using AI tools. So it says things such as, you didn't come to class today. We waited for you. and." then it will be part of the file and there will be a, a fun little message. There's also the uh, classroom climate forum, the management teams first, and then the classroom climate forum. We want to know through those forums how students feel in the classroom. And then group uh, group chat, we really prefer group chat. We call it just know me, but it's know me cohesion. So the idea is to get people to know each other, but in a team spirit. Therefore, there's no individual chatting. It's uh, only group chatting. And there's a dashboard that gives you an overview. For example, if there's a too much absence, then we'll have alerts. Or if a student says that doesn't go well in class, then we'll send resources for that student.
that's what we're working on with Nomi and with the teachers that uh, that are using that app. We want to make sure that students don't feel alone anymore. We want them to feel they are part of a community. We want them to be as happy as students that you see here on the picture. I can see there are many questions in the chat. Yeah, very interesting questions. It really shows how people are interested, are curious about that uh, app, Nomi. Josie Monier says, do CEGEPs must approve the use of app an application where students share their names and pictures? Actually, some CEGEPs have decided not to use pictures, but to ask students to use only avatars or objects. But it's not the full name, it's only the first name. As I said, sometimes on the list there can be two or three or four uh, first names. I've called a, stu a student Dubois for years because at the uh, secretary, at the secretary, they, they, they mixed the first name and the last name. So at some point, the student told me Dubois is actually my last name, it's not, not my first name. So, so we only use the first name in our app. If I understand correctly, there's no approval process through the CEGEP administration. No, Nomi is shared through. Uh, subscription on a subscription base for teachers. Or sometimes some CEGEPs will ask for people to use only avatars or other, for, uh, other methods, but there's no sensitive information that is shared there. And we're there to have a inappropriate photo, then the, the teacher can actually delete the profile of the student. So the student will have to recreate their profile. There's a learning process. Students use other social media, of course, but Nomi is a form of social media in a way, but it's a way for students to learn what they can share, what they will share. So that's a conversation that uh, can be had also in class with the teachers. Another question, another question, icebreaking activities, are they uh, conducted remotely? Not yet, it's coming. Many students have asked that it happens. If you're interested, please send an email, sonia at nomi.ca. I will share it with you. Here it is. You have my LinkedIn as well. We are developing Nomi so that it can be used uh, remotely, but it always has to be synchrone, meaning that it's always live. It can be in a virtual classroom or in a real classroom, but it's always synchrone, simultaneous, that is. In a webinar, it's impossible to raise their hand. So if you have questions, please ask them in the QNR module, or you can use, for comments, you can uh, use the chat box. Marcus and Roy has some interesting questions. When they create their file, can the teacher see the, uh, the student's answers be, before other students can see them? No, they, see, they all see that at the same time. Are examples of games included in Nomi or does the student need to create them? No, it's included. We've uh, gone through the content. We have experts uh, in, in inclusion that help us. That's why we don't have that many games because it takes time to develop. It's really our strength. There are many tools such as Clap or others that allow for similar games, but you have to build them uh, yourselves. They are more like questionnaires or other, or they take other forms. But what is great about Nomi is that we offer the content. You just have to click on the button to uh, launch games that have been validated before in terms of inclusion.
with the um, class climate form, what do you aim at? You want to have feedback from the students? You want them to uh, tell you how they feel or they, they're going to talk about other students in their class? No, at the moment, it's really about how they feel in the classroom. I don't remember the turn of phrase exactly. We, at the moment, we have one question, but we want to give people more choices or give teachers more choices. For example, is there something you would like to dig deeper into? But at the moment, uh, it, we are in the development phase. So it's a general question about how do you feel and are there things that you didn't understand? Mary Christine again. Can teachers create new games or new questions on Nomi? Not at the moment. Many teachers ask us to create new games. They want to create games and questions themselves. We are thinking about it. Again, we want to make sure that everything is inclusive, is based on inclusion. So. Of course, we want teachers to have a certain control over, over Nomi, but we want to make sure that inclusion is still there. Again, our activities are all validated. We want to make sure that it will trigger conversations, that everybody will feel comfortable, that no student will feel left out. We work with experts, Unix design, in uh, user experience, uh, experts in uh, users, users' experience. So we want to make sure that every step is well thought out. I could have asked a question such as, do you like um, downhill ski or country or, or, a, or cross country skiing? Well, some students have never skied um, neither in, neither on the slopes or, or cross country. So we, that's how we limit the questions that we ask. We want it to be inclusive. Another question. Can the attendance record be transferred? No, it's not possible. Maybe we could have that kind of agreement, but at the moment we, have that attendance uh, record in Nomi, but it can be transferred because it will be generated. Then you can file that report into LIA or feed it into LIA. But what I do, and it's even easier, what I would do before Nomi, I would print out my attendance uh, list on Omnivox. I would take notes. I didn't want to stay behind my computer. I wanted to go and meet my students. I would note down on that sheet of paper the information that I would have to transfer the whole thing. But sometimes the sheet would actually stay on my desk and I would forget uh, to transfer it. But now it's easier because I get that report in my emails. Then I can feed in the info, attendance, absence in uh, the other platform. What's the format of that report? It's a PDF. It shows people in attendance, people that are absent, and also on the dashboard. You can see, you can go back in the class history. And going back to Dahlia, Here's what inter what's interesting. I don't know if you're familiar with Dahlia, but it's a good failure predictor. I find it very interesting. But with Nomi, we don't on we not only want to know who's at risk of failure, we want actually to be able to respond in the present at, at this very moment. That's why we with the that um, climate for our class climate form, we want to know, okay. If someone is in trouble, we can respond right now. Or if someone has been absent for two classes, okay, we can respond right now. I didn't go in all the details of Know Me, but we have a feature to learn people's names easier. So I can, I can also know 
who's participating more or less. There are so many students in our classroom. So if we take too many time to learn people's name, then some people will fall by the wayside and be left behind. Another question, there are so many questions. You said it would be better to have activities throughout the semester instead of just one at the beginning. Is there an order for those activities that is preferable? Yes, there is an order that is preferable. For example, the travel activity I talked about, I talked about, it's not something you do at the very beginning of the semester. Let's say you have 15 minute, uh, a 15 minute free before a break, maybe you'll do that activity. So you have an extra 15 minute while you, you launch that travel activity. And then during the break, students will keep talking about their, their travel uh, ideas. So there's a certain order, but you don't have to follow it. Mary Kristen, she's uh, asking another question again because she, she was busy during uh, your answer. So what do you do with that um, class climate form? What's the what's the objective? I'm a teacher and many of you are teachers. So sometimes after a class, my feeling is it went very well, everybody understood, I'm under the impression that everything is fine. But then when I got I get those forms, Maybe some students will tell me that, no, it didn't feel that good, didn't understand everything. They would need educational support, maybe effective support as well, or emotional support. I can listen to them, but I, of course I'm not an expert, so I will refer them to uh, the psychological resources that are present in the CEGEP. But if it's an educational matter, then I'll offer to meet with me or tutor. it could be tutoring also. I'll explain uh, the path that they have to uh, take to get uh, tutoring. So the idea is to have the tool to go beyond my own impression and to uh, answer to the needs of my students. So, so now you said that there's a subscription costs for the students and then there's uh, institutional subscription. Can you give us an idea of those costs? The institutional part is being discussed with uh, the uh, with the direction. For teachers it's $200 on a yearly basis. So they subscribe once a year. They have access to know me for all their uh, for all their class groups for the whole year. And when it comes to institutional subscriptions, I can tell you that it will be a lot cheaper. There are a lot of benefits in uh, Rosemont College. Many students are using it, thanks to the teachers. And we really see the benefits of using that. Some people can think that, okay, using it in one classroom is, is enough and they don't have to use it a lot uh, again in a second classroom, but that's not the case. For example, people can play cards or they can play Scrabble. And it'll get easier and easier because uh, students will be able to use the same profile in all their courses. They don't have to recreate a profile. It can be in philosophy, in their French class. And then Nomi creates random uh, groups. So it'll be a new, a new game, a new, a new play, a new group. So it'll be a new game every time. Can subscription costs be refunded by uh, colleges? Yes. Last year, when you, we started marketing uh, in August, we thought, well, 
the CIGEP doesn't have the money to pay for that, teachers would tell us, well, we don't have the funds, but actually there are funds for that. If you're a teacher, I can show it to you. I can explain uh, know me to you further. I can go to your CIGEP, especially if in Mon Montreal, but we can also do that by video call and I can have you test uh, the Nomi app. Teachers can test Nomi. They can put themselves in the skin of a student and test Nomi. I don't remember what the question was. Uh, I went on a different tangent. Yeah, the question was about uh, funds available to pay for the sus subscription costs. Yeah, there are budgets in mental health that can be used because the impact of loneliness on physical as well as mental health is huge. It's not just the perseverance, it's also the, Im the impact of uh, loneliness that is addressed here. We're more and more aware of loneliness as a problem, so there are funds available to help students with their mental health there are also funds linked to digital tools. Sometimes that's not how they are displayed, but when you discuss with CIGEPs, normally they, they want to uh, use those funds. For example, $200 per, per teacher, yes, but if it's an institutional subscription, you will have a, a great, great discount for the, for the whole uh, teacher body. Well, right on the dot, it's 12.30. Thank you, Sonia. It was very interesting. I will include the questions that were asked in the document, the chat, uh, doc, the chat document that will be shared with all the participants. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. There's a new webinar next week. It's about practice communities for inclusive practices. I hope you'll be in attendance. I'm sure it was going to be very interesting. So thank you, Sonia. See you again. I look forward to meet you at another time. I leave, I leave some time for people to share their comments. Uh, I will also include them in that document that will uh, include all what was shared in the chat box. So see you again, Sonia. See you again, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you.